please, 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 please. Maybe you don't know me, maybe it's your first time watching one of my videos, but listen to this because it's incredibly important. As a professional programmer, this is the one thing that is the most important skill I've gained in the years I've been a programmer. It's one of those things I learned from a lot of different people that taught me all the things I know now. And it's one of those things that, you know, you really hate doing as a programmer, but you just need to get good at it. And it's also one of those things that needs you to fight your own instinct while you're doing it. I'm talking about being good at debugging and testing your program. You see, you might be thinking a bug that happened only once is something you can just safely ignore. Wrong! A bug that happens only once is something that you need to debug right away. Because I promise you, when your program gets released in the wild, this is the number one bug that's gonna come back to hunt you in your dreams. You don't patch a bug that you don't understand. You need to understand what happened and why it's happening so that you can fix it properly if you never want to have to deal with it again. I'm recording this video now because this week I've been working on crushing a couple of really nasty bugs and luckily I was recording video while I was working on one of those so I thought I could show you a little bit my process for debugging something pretty hard to debug. You see, in about two hours of gameplay I got this bug only once and I'm not even sure how it triggered. And when I restarted the game, everything was back to normal, there was no corrupted safe, I couldn't trigger the bug again, everything was working fine. So what gives? See, when you're debugging something, the very first thing you want to do is try to find a way to reproduce the bug 100% of the time. And it's sometimes way harder than it sounds. But if you can do that, then you're basically home free. But what happened when you can't? When, what happened when you don't know what's happening? Well, now you have to use a couple of tricks. The first thing is to follow the classics and ask yourself the five W's. So what happened? Was it a crash? Was it a um, strange behavior? Was it some items that wasn't doing what it's supposed to do? When did it happen? Were you changing level? Were you loading something? Were you dropping items? Were you moving around in the world? Where did it happen? Were you in the, some specific menus or were you um, running around in the hover world? Were you in the fifth level or the third level of the game? And of course, you know, who, if you're playing a multiplayer game, maybe you want to know which user it happened to or something like that. But in general, you want to try to answer as many of those questions to help you pinpoint the actual issue. And then once you have some answers to these questions, you can try to reproduce some of the conditions that triggered the bug. So for example, in my game, I have a switch that allows me to set up and start the game in a given state so that I have everything I need to try to debug a problem. For example, I have a special ships with infinite cargo space, infinite ammo, infinite health so that I can just do what I need to do. I can even start in any level I want so that I can quickly get to where I want to be. Because one of the biggest time waster is trying to reset up the environment you need to test your bug. If you need to spend time like launching commands, spawning stuff every single time you want to test the bug, then you're wasting a huge amount of time. Still, sometimes you don't know the conditions, you don't have the answers to all the W's, you don't know what happened. It happens a lot when you have randomly generated content and you don't exactly know what state of the randomizer created the issue in the first place. So what can you do in these cases? Well, that's where you have to start laying traps. So one of my favorite tools is using prints to be able to answer some of the W's next time the bug happened. Sometimes I'll also put breakpoints in rare places where I know I shouldn't be going to make sure that when the bug happens, I can catch it in the act. And for that, Godot provides a lot of useful tools that you need to become very familiar with to debug your program. You can put breakpoints in your GD scripts, you can explore the current scene tree live, you can 
check the values of all the exposed properties for your objects in the editor and of course you can always use the print method to print any number of debug information that you might need. In the case of my specific bug, I stumbled on some hydrogen that shouldn't have been there and when I got close to it, the game crashed. So I looked back at the footage, I must have spent two hours looking at the footage frame by frame and going back as far as the very beginning because who knows if the bug wasn't triggered like 20 minutes before it actually happened. So I looked carefully at what was happening and what I was doing at that time and so I saw that this hydrogen was there one level even before the bug actually triggered but at that time I hadn't realized so I went back even further and then I finally found a place where I dropped some hydrogen two level before the actual crash but I was wondering what does this have to do with the actual bug? Because really, dropping stuff shouldn't be anything special. I do it all the time. Even in the recorded footage I had, I dropped stuff everywhere and I never triggered the bug. So what happened in this specific instance that created this issue? With this footage, I now had an idea for a setup that I could do to try to reproduce the bug. So I set myself up with a lot of hydrogen in my inventory and I started dropping it and picking it up and dropping it everywhere, changing level, trying to reproduce the issue. And sure enough, after a couple of tries, I managed to get into a situation where I could reproduce it nearly 100% of the time. That's where I started looking at the logs and I noticed a strange print that I put. Yeah, sometimes my message get a little bit strange, but this is a print that should never have been shown. It was a very obvious message for me to know that something is wrong. So I put a breakpoint there and I used good old property explorer to try to see what was going on. And I noticed in one of my arrays that I had many times the same object or different objects with the same unique ID. Either case, that shouldn't be something that happens. So I started looking at where this data is coming from and this is coming from my scanner that's generating all of this data. The problem is that the scanner is something that's being run a lot on all the ships all the time. So because it's kind of impractical to put breakpoints there, I started putting in prints to show the evolution of the data. Of course this generated walls of text which I copied and pasted into Notepad and I started analyzing them just like I was doing frame by frame my data from the video recording. This time I was looking at the internals of my game. My first thought was that I might have multiple times the same object dropped when I'm dropping hydrogen. So I looked at the size of the arrays that were generated versus the number of items I was dropping. But it turned out that it was the right number of items. So I started looking at the actual IDs and I was wondering, is this something that's corrupted even before I start doing scanners or is it something that the scanner itself is corrupting? And turns out that it seems like it was even before I started the scanner. So I started looking at what happens when I'm dropping item and that's where I finally found my issue. The problem you see was a pretty simple one in the end. It just was really hard to find. Because recently I've added the ability to modify data inside your inventory. Before, you could only have data that was directly related to the JSON data of the item. But now, you can keep a bunch of modified information. And by a simple mistake, I started putting the unique ID inside the modified data of the items you pick up. But that would even be fine if the items weren't stacked. But when the items are stacked, then they all share the same modified attributes so they all share the same ID. So when you pick up a stack of item and you start dropping them all at the same time, that's where the bug triggers. And this only happens if you have a big stack of a certain item, which is admittedly relatively rare, especially like dropping it and picking it up again. This is not something I do usually when I'm testing my game. So that's why I had trouble to pinpoint it. In the end, the solution was so simple. I just had to go where I pick up items and add a line that deletes the unique ID when you pick it up. And just like that, my problem was fixed. It was 20 characters, one liner, but it took me so long to fix it. 
This brings me to the last point I want to mention. As programmers, we often instinctively try to avoid behaviors that might trigger crash. You know, we know the internals of our software and we kind of want to be nice to it. And when we think like that, we need to catch ourselves and force ourselves to try this behavior, even if it means spending two days after that debugging the issue. Because if you think that opening and closing windows too quickly might trigger a crash or clicking on a button twice is going to bring problems or corrupt data, if you don't test it, then you can be 100% sure that when the game goes live, that's going to be the number one problem all your users are gonna have. I know so many great programmers that will build these glass towers of perfect code that works so well when they're testing it, but then once it goes live, the first person putting their hand on it just collapse everything in a single brief moment of glory. And for this, there's no easy solution. You need to work on improving your bug squashing toolbox. You need to develop an instinct and experience fixing common issues that come back again and again and again all the time. You will eventually be able to develop a way of programming that makes it easier to track down bugs. And hopefully, eventually, instead of being the one posting on Stack Overflow, maybe you'll be the one answering questions. And that's pretty much what I have for you guys this week. I actually spent most of the last two weeks working on two really nasty bugs. One is the one I just talked about and the other one is an iOS crash that I had since the Alpha 4 that took me a really long time to find a workaround. Incidentally, if you have the time, please do check out in the comment below the links to the Solar Rogue game. Maybe consider buying it, supporting me, that always helps me. And I hope you enjoy the content and see you all in the next video. Bye!